welcome to the Hallmarkies podcast. <laughs> I'm really, really excited today because we're talking about mysteries, but more than that, I am talking with my friend from All the Feels podcast, and the very, the very exciting Dory is here, and I am Phil Critter, Rachel Wagner, and Dory, thank you so much for coming and talking with us. I could not be happier to be here. I'm so excited. I always love coming on and talking to you, so um, as you can imagine, I have tons of opinions that I am <laughs> raring to go with, and I'm really happy. Yeah, so we were saying off air that uh, it's been an interesting couple of months for Hallmark. <laughs> <laughs> and I, uh, I've i been grateful for the mysteries. Normally, I'm not yeah. that much of a mystery person, but uh, they've been all pretty solid. The only one that I, I wasn't a huge fan of the Gourmet Detective one, but for the most part, they've been pretty good. And, uh, and the rom-coms... Haven't been my favorite. <laughs> Not been, in, in my opinion. I know. The mysteries are really saving us right now. Yes. And I'm like you. I'm not normally the biggest mystery fan. I mean, I enjoy them. But I usually, typically look forward to the rom-coms more. Mm -hmm. But not the past couple months. <laughs> so that's been a nice surprise. Yes. Yeah. And we'll, uh, we'll I mean, all talk more about that when we do our love ever ever after recap uh but yeah it's just i don't know somebody had some some they had some parties at hallmark that were must have been really fun because that's all that anybody wants to write scripts about lately and it's just been a little not my favorite I know party planning all over the place decorating organizing yeah. i mean I, at this point, I'm just like, is it spring fever yet? Because we need to switch things up. How, how do you feel, this is a tangent, but how do you feel about the fact that they're like bringing up old movies from Canada and presenting them as premieres? This is very weird. Like the one this upcoming weekend, The Bad Date Chronicles, it's five years old. Yes, I 100% with every bone in my body <laughs> hate this <laughs> i am not a fan i i understand that they have positioned themselves as you know we are going to premiere new movies every weekend maybe they don't have the capacity to like produce all those movies so they are buying older ones i'm not a fan like i don't like that i don't like when the look is crazy yeah. different and it is after five or six years and unfortunately those things are distracting when for weeks before that you're getting brand new movies shot in 2019 and I, you can feel when things are dated, and I absolutely think it's a bad decision. Yeah. I mean, I guess it's actually three years old, but the one, the one in March that's like uh, Adventures in Love and Babysitting or something like that. Travis Van Winkle, he looks like a child. Like he looks so much younger than he's he does in it now because it's five years. That movie's five years old, and that's too old. That is yeah. way too old. Even the, the Pope looks dated like you look yeah. at the post there's no saving those promo shots they it looks five years older yeah like if you can't have the actor on home and family because they look so significantly different then that's a problem <laughs> like what yep it's weird and i i don't know it's just especially somebody pointed this out on uh, our, uh hotline for hallmark pointed this out that that they have a bunch of movies they never aired from Thank last you. year. You have the whole Thank month you. of March blank, basically. And you yep. have the New Year's movie they never aired. You have yep. two movies from fall that were finished. I know because yep. I did interviews with people on them that they <laughs> never aired. <laughs> and so why not just release them? Who, like, I know. So weird. And they never technically released In the Key of Love. Uh, on Hallmark it was just on at least I don't think uh, I think it was just on Hallmark movies now and uh, and so they could release that but like it's but no the choice instead of releasing a movie from last year that's finished 
the choices to release a movie from five years ago. Like, it's so oh, weird. I don't understand it. I really don't get what they're doing with this because you're absolutely right. There are so many movies that never made air that people were excited about. Like people were into, we were talking about yeah. them. Like for all of us who follow this stuff, we pay attention when movies are announced and we read the synopses and we make podcasts about them. So yeah. when they don't <laughs> air, it's really frustrating. Yeah. Yeah, we could have seen now Mater learned how to play the guitar for that country music one and Jesse Stram written by Rick Garman. How bad can it be? I know. And I would watch either of them in anything. Yeah. So it's just it's really <laughs> frustrating. It's, it's so really weird. Yeah. and you know, thank goodness for Twitter so that I know what I'm in for. Because when I saw the thing about the one that's like five years old, yeah. I was like, okay, had I just gone into this, I would have been not happy, <laughs> just <laughs> watching, not understanding what was going on. I'd be like, what? Why is he aging backwards? I'm so <laughs> confused. <laughs> it's like it's like the Irishman. But like with Hallmark. Yes. How they do some CG? I, I didn't know they had the budget for that. I can't handle it. Oh my goodness. That's funny. Yeah. So it's a weird time to be a Hallmark fan. But but anyway, it's we did. <laughs> back to so so we did have we had two mysteries this month in February, and if you didn't get to listen to our episode on the January mysteries, uh, you really should because has my dad on and to get him to watch television is a tall feat so you all <laughs> should watch should listen to that episode because it was really fun and i love my dad so uh so we have two this month and uh so the first one we're gonna talk about is picture perfect mysteries dead over diamonds so dory what was your thoughts about the first picture picture perfect mysteries I really enjoyed the first one. I love these two together. They have good chemistry, and I would hope so since they're married. <laughs> um, <laughs> they, I really liked it. I liked the wedding setting of the first movie. So I had high hopes going into this latest movie, uh -huh. um, and I was pleased. Yeah. For sure. Yeah. yeah. Well, there's a couple things I've never, I don't think I've ever said it on the show, but I just, I love them so much. I mean, I've said that, I've said that I love them, but, the, but one of the reasons why I love them, I think it is so cute that they, it's not like she just, she took his name, which is fine and normal, but they created a whole new last name, which I think is the cutest Obsessed thing I've ever seen. I and, know. And, you, and it works so well because some, some names you couldn't do that. It just would be too weird, right. but because they have the perfect names for it. It's so cute. I just love it. Fan of Vega. I love that too. I yeah. love that too. And my co-host um, for my podcast, All the Fields, Mel, she loves it too. Like she, yeah. they just made a whole new name yeah. for themselves. Yeah. It's, so it's so, I've never heard of anybody else do that before. And I love it. So w way to go, Alexa and Carlos. It won my heart. Um, we love you guys. I I did not love their Christmas movie together. It was not for me. But this the the first uh, first picture perfect mysteries I really enjoyed. You can tell it had sort of the the solid hand of Ron Oliver behind it. It had some style. It had some class. Uh, it had some humor to it. Uh, you know, it was a pretty grisly wedding. <laughs> Yeah, that, that was a brutal affair, yeah. <laughs> for sure. <laughs> um, but uh, you know, and the other thing that does make me laugh is that 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 Hallmark loves photographers. Like, that's oh my gosh, the favorite yes. profession. If you're not a chef or a baker, yeah, or maybe a, a designer, you are a photographer. <laughs> there have been yep. so many. I mean, just this last. There was uh, Mary Patterson as a photographer just really recently. And uh, there's a bunch. And Amelia Ullerp was a photographer. Candace Cameron Bray in the shoe movie was a photographer. 
there. <laughs> I know. It's like photographers, chefs, like you said, decorators, party planners. Like that <laughs> is just in the pantheon of Hallmark yeah. professions. I think part of the reason why I liked Love to the Rescue so much is, well, I mean, she was an animator. So of course I'm going to like that because I love animation. But like, it was such a different job. <laughs> Way to go. Yeah. <laughs> Yes, and like she did box. such a great job with it. Exactly. <laughs> and uh, and so, anyway, that's kind of fun. It's a little bit of a stretch, her being involved, and that's always a hard thing yes. with these mysteries. <laughs> yes, it always <laughs> is. But I'm at the point now where I just sit back and I'm like, okay, how are they going to get her into this? Oh, okay. <laughs> She's yeah. shooting this event. Okay, that's going to be the crime scene. Got it. I'm in. She <laughs> caught some things on film. Perfect. That's right. all we need. The, the, the most ridiculous one. The biggest reach. I mean, the, the Baker murder she baked is pretty big reach. But I still don't think yeah. it's as big a reach as Holly Robinson Pete as the morning show chef. <laughs> like, what? <laughs> <laughs> it's it, it's a lot it's a lot but but anyway so yeah and <clears throat> this one so this one was written by marcy holland who is a really fun hallmark writer she did very very valentine which i love, I love that. yeah and it i'm dying to do you should come on and do the episode with me because i'm dying to review her she has this whole series of shark movies that she did <laughs> And I'm dying to do a special episode where we review Marcy Holland's shark movies. But um, um she's just a find me up. Yes. yes. Pencil me in. Uh because uh I, I just I love shark movies and uh, I think that would be really fun. But yeah, she's done a lot of fun movies and <clears throat> uh she did the first she wrote the first one and Sailing Into Love and uh anyway, just a whole bunch. And yeah let's see her yeah her uh, o- ozark sharks <laughs> <laughs> yes there's like this what? whole title alone I'm in. <laughs> Tra- trailer park sharks i mean <laughs> trailer park sharks. i want to see it so bad um mississippi river sharks okay yep perfect yeah, yeah. i'll watch it <laughs> Okay, it's a deal. Um, anyway, she's great. We ha- we've interviewed her. She's really fun. And so I-, I think you can tell when there's a talented director and a talented writer uh, and two people that know each other obviously very well, have nice chemistry, it's just going to be a pretty decent film. And right. uh, we actually got to interview Trezo Maharo, who plays Noah on this. And I thought that he was a really fun interview, but he was in this movie way more than I thought. He was with Alexa's character a lot of the movie and I, I thought, loved it yeah right he was really fun I thought and a nice uh kind of a, a nice companion for her uh through things it just kept things from getting too kind of tired I don't know it was good I liked that a lot and yeah. one thing that's nice with both of these movies we're gonna talk about tonight is they kind of have a bit of a heist element as well yep. as a mystery element yep because both movies have an, a necklace or piece of jewelry that is stolen. Uh, so I know I, we were I said, working with precious jewels <laughs> in both movies, which I was here for. And I also yeah. like that they kind of expanded the universes with both of these movies. Yeah. Like we got some characters who will hopefully be regular going into the future. So I really like that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And uh, so I, and I love the little animated intro that we have for this. It just, it so just starts it off. I'm so glad you brought that up. It <laughs> is so cute. The music, the animation, yeah. even the, the font, perfect. Yeah. It really brings back that feeling of something from like the 70s, you know, it's like cute little, little intro kind of a thing. And, uh, <laughs> and so, yeah, the, the, the simple plot for this was photographer Allie and detective Sam's investigation into a priceless stolen necklace leads to danger and an unexpected death so i always divide up these into the the murder the victim what i call family fun and red herrings so this starts out with our our scene in uh the the like the party in the gallery and you have the 
this Manchester necklace it's called and uh the uh the Manchester necklace is stolen and uh the um and so so there's there's this whole sort of setup with this actor with this uh, a thing and it starts out so your first clue is that you have uh Gwendolyn kind of eyeing the necklace all night she's not on the guest list uh she's sort of threatening about the necklace she's our sort of first red herring that we have mm-hmm. were you very suspicious about Gwendolyn I was mm-hmm. <laughs> I was right off the bat yeah um and then we had uh Mr. White at the gallery opening he he's our actor who gets sick He's got a, a heart <laughs> palpitation. Um, Already laughing about Mr. White. <laughs> did, did you did you think that he was an actor? <laughs> were you suspicious? Of no. The start? Yeah. No. That entire plot point took me by surprise, and I was laughing so yeah. hard. I was hit by that. Yeah. So we find out that he was hired by Gwendolyn to act being sick in in the in the scene then there's also james risden and uh uh thomas wake who's a tech guy basically who's kind of like fallen his his investments his technology hasn't panned out the way that he thought um and then we have clint baxter uh he is uh the he's already being looked into by the by the police on several different larceny cases to find out so he's, he's up to no good Clint he's been busy. yeah he's been busy <laughs> uh, and then we have patrick patrick risden who is kind of upset with his brother but he's sort of his stooge too and kind of does whatever his brother wants him to do and uh he had access to the key of the um for the necklace and and then uh and then there's a reporter named daniel drake and uh, <laughs> uh and then uh we also find out that there's uh there's security guards involved and uh all kinds of madness and so uh the the family fun in this one is that uh there's the introduction of uncle louise played by eric estrada uh, eric estrada welcome to hallmark <laughs> we've missed you join us <laughs> yeah so how, did you enjoyed him i did i hope that he gets to do more um in the coming movies but i like him i think that that's kind of an a fun character always like the uncle or the dad or the grandpa who used to be on the force retired but is having trouble letting it go and is still meddling in all the cases like that's a pretty standard yeah. hallmark movie character that i always tend to enjoy yeah i i think uh i think so and i thought it was kind of funny the way he's like you sure you fixed that <laughs> that faucet like what that was funny <laughs> when he walked into that um house that has been quote unquote renovated he was like uh have you done anything because this still looks like a mess <laughs> yeah and i can't remember who it was this i think it was him that said it but i'm not positive he, that i think he said i like coffee that knocks me in the head and says hey drink me <laughs> good line. very good job marcy there that was good um so uh so then we have uh, the uh, so it starts out with their the whole heist of the necklace is the part of it is if they get permission to show off this dagger and that's the brother and so that they can and then there's this distraction so then they can get into the to the to the necklace and I uh, I loved uh, Maya <laughs> and she's she's just there to like be nosy and to practice her acting <laughs> yep. Was funny. I love her. Like yeah. she was so funny and silly. It was. I loved her. I love her character. Yeah, yeah. I liked it too. Like throughout the whole movie, she's like 
practicing her acting. It made me laugh. Uh, that was good. And then we have Milo Shandell, who we had on the podcast this last week. Uh, he's almost always playing some kind of skeevy banker or <laughs> business owner. Uh, or <laughs> He's one of those actors that uh, that you know is almost always up to no good <laughs> in a yep. horror movie. <laughs> it's yep. so pretty bad. It's kind of like the uh, Ben Wilkinson that he's he's always the, he's always gonna be murdered. You know for sure. Right. Right. <laughs> yeah. And so anyway, he is uh, he's James Risen. He owns the art, and so he's really upset that everything has been stolen. Uh, and then you have uh, you have this Trezzo playing. Uh, Noah, who's the son of Karen Holmes's character, who owns the art gallery, and things are kind of, she really needs this to be a success, so this is all a problem for her, and yeah, I, like I said, I really liked him in this movie. I thought him and uh, Alexa had nice chemistry, so I would say do more of that. Like, keep him yeah. involved. He was really good, and uh, so the gallery's going to be closed if they don't find the necklace, and uh and so and then you have uh you have patrick risden who uh is sort of they're sort of suspicious of him because he's the one that asked about the dagger yeah so there's like one of the art buyers uh was named margaret and she has this video of at mr wake's house and so then they they find on the video they find gwendolyn leaving the house and we find out that she's dating mr wake so mm -hmm. and that's how she got into the party she was his plus one so mm -hmm. it's pretty, she's getting more suspicious and then you also have a, a red herring in this guy carmichael that uh he's a pickpocket uh and he pickpocketed from thomas wake and so there's like, and then you have this whole scene where they're interviewing his wife, Carmichael's wife, to see yep. if, uh, if we think that uh, he's the one in on it, but that's pretty much worthless. That, that, that red herring goes nowhere for Carmichael, <laughs> the pickpocket. Yeah, she, the wife is supposed to be his alibi. Yeah. And, uh she confirms <laughs> yeah. I need that scene I and I was sad because I love Debs Howard I think that she should be a lead in a Hallmark movie she's so cute she was such a great interview and yeah, she's I so she, he's in this movie for like 30 seconds <laughs> no I fair know. no fair uh but anyway so yes uh there's that kind of red herring and then we have uh the um uh so okay so then alexa goes down to the dock to uh to take pictures and try to uh to spy on um oh which i think it's on baxter is i think who she was spying on if i remember right mm -hmm. um and she's surprised by uh by drake and uh, or, or surprised by the other journalist, Daniel Drake. And he's looking for a case. And, and then uh, the, there's a leak. And, uh, and so she is kind of, uh, she's not sure. And then I loved the whole scene where they, the whole, can we go get coffee scene between her Me and her. So <laughs> Uh, the uh, uh, she says, "Do you have my uh, do you have my number?" And she says, "I have your number. It's just nice. I can. This is just nice that I can use it." Now, <laughs> they know. I love that. Yeah, and and then we had Uncle Louise making a uh, making eggs and dancing at five in the morning. <laughs> <laughs> she's like, he's like, it's five in the morning. He's like, oh, I let you sleep in. <laughs> <laughs> That was good. <laughs> uh, and we start to learn a little bit more about Sam's backstory in this movie. We find out that his, uh, his partner, Gabrielle Russell, uh, that uh, she ended up getting killed and in, in, a, in a case. And uh, she 
I guess the assistant DA wanted to go for a bigger fish, uh, but somebody in the somebody cut Gabrielle's brakes, and she they never found they never got any justice for her killing, and so that's why he left New York. And uh, so that was pretty pretty interesting. Yes, and we see him like going through the old files, right, from the case. And at some point, is he looking at a ring, a diamond ring? Yes. So evidently, he yeah. was going to propose to her or did propose to her or something like that. Yeah, and we don't know the details, but I was very intrigued. And I liked that we got a little bit more of his backstory and the same for the other mystery. We got more of yeah. Jesse Metcalf's story in these two movies. Um, so it feels like we're progressing and kind of yeah. getting to flesh these characters out a little bit more. Yeah, they really were pretty similar movies in a lot of ways. They were both second yeah. movies of the franchise. They both and I had kind of similar similar beats. They even both had coffee scenes. Like, it's sort of interesting. Um, I know. I was thinking the same thing, especially because I watched them back to back, and I was like, "Wow, this is <laughs> this is kind of creepy." Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I I did laugh when they're able to get like they're able to tap into James uh, Risen's uh, Wi-Fi, like, <laughs> and, and once they're able to do that. They, I mean, Noah's got some mad skills because they are able to get everything from this guy. I mean, it is, he has no firewalls of any kind. <laughs> oh, and I really, it doesn't exist in real life because I would be scared to get a <laughs> network anywhere. <laughs> <laughs> it was funny to me. It was good. And, uh, and so then we have this whole scene where uh, she's, uh, she comes back for her uh, for her phone and to the dock and she sees Patrick and the security guard and that's when Baxter stops her so Baxter was up to no good no good yep. in this movie and uh, she sends a text to Sam that says Thunderbird Marina SOS and uh, so I uh, then we have he rushes over and uh there's all kinds of things going on at one point the necklace ends up in the water and sam ends up rushing into the water after alexa and then there was a side of me that uh that was like what happened to her camera she had her camera yeah. all with her a giant camera yeah. and then she's Expensive. in the water yep <laughs> um yep. But yeah, did you think he was a little, a little much? Like, cause she says, "Oh, I was a, I was a world class swimmer or whatever in in a varsity swimmer in a high school." Should should he have uh, jumped in after her, or is that a little, a little bit of a hero complex going on? I mean, we needed him to jump in after her. We needed them both to be, <laughs> all, you know, all like heavy breathing and yes. just barely escaping death we needed the <laughs> moment of them like bonding over it and yeah. i did laugh she was like i was a varsity swimmer like you didn't have to do all that <laughs> he was like okay <laughs> gotcha. it, it does make sense though for his character because he already lost one partner to water you know to yep. so of yep. course he's going to be kind of triggered by that um, plus, it's dark. How the heck is he supposed to know she's a varsity swimmer? For all he exactly. knows, for all he right. knows, he, she doesn't even know how to swim. She, he has no idea. And exactly, That's not yeah. what we want: the hero and the heroine. Like we want a hero who is protective and you know is very has that in them to like be a hero to step up in those moments but we also want a heroine who can totally take care of herself and doesn't need it every time but it's just mm -hmm. nice that the help is offered yeah and it was just cute after uh she got rescued and like their little kind of banter <laughs> it was it was good it was really cute and uh so then uh she's she's going to cancel coffee uh, or he's going to cancel coffee 
and uh but louise gives him a nice pep talk so you, know, you gotta do it and so i love he ends up that showing. it was good it was good i love that because i really thought he wasn't gonna go get coffee with her and i could yeah. totally see in one of these hallmark mysteries where they are just left the that she is just left hanging and then in the next movie it starts off and there's tension because <laughs> they haven't seen each other since he bailed on coffee and blah 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 so it was really nice to see him take in what his uncle was saying and to make it happen even if he was a little bit late i forgive yeah. him um we also we find out that uh, i forgot to say that thomas wake ends up getting murdered yeah. at his at his house and uh, so yeah so that's obviously upsetting for Gwendolyn <laughs> and uh, basically we find out that the whole plan was by James Risden uh he wanted to steal the necklace from himself so that he could mm -hmm. file the insurance claim and the the plan all, all along was to blame try to frame Gwendolyn for it and uh, so it was kind of a deal with the devil with mr mr uh, drake and yep. uh yeah and then gwendolyn was going to be the, the fall or wake uh was going to be the fall of uh of them their whole little plan and yeah i thought that that james and patrick risen were such like creepy characters and they, they, they were they did a really the actors did a really good job of being like I don't like it. these people. Are yeah. <laughs> like you see uh Patrick like kissing the assistant at one point and it's like Yes. Oh god. What's going on here? <laughs> so yeah. yeah, it was, it was well yeah. done. It was well done. And uh yeah, so I, I don't I thought this was fun. I I really enjoyed, like I said, the combination of kind of a heist feel with a little bit of murder mystery uh clues i liked the i liked louise i liked the coffee date i i liked uh, noah a lot uh so overall i was really pleased i think i liked this better than the first one i did too and what completely sold me on it though was the end when everything is revealed it felt very like oceans 11 yeah yeah. montage of like everyone's specific part in the heist because no one's hands were clean really it was right. they each person kind of had their own part to play in it the pickpocket had his role the actor had his role all of that yeah. and i love how they revealed it all with the music i was like okay this is what i love like a heist paper super fun way to end it and um i agree with you i liked this one better than the first one mm -hmm. yeah so yeah i'd give it probably i don't know uh four crowns i am right there with you four crowns for me i i thought i thought it was just such a fun watch i was entertained yeah. through and through yeah yeah We'd like to take a second and thank our sponsor for this episode of the podcast. They are our good friends over at HelloFresh. They are America's number one meal kit, and they've been a great sponsor for us. And right now, you if you go to HelloFresh.com slash Hallmarkies10, use code Hallmarkies10 for 10 free meals, including shipping, free shipping. <laughs> and you can uh, get uh, your choice of 22 plus season seasonal chef curated recipes each week that you have and there's different themes low calorie vegetarian family friendly you get uh, servings of two and servings of four uh they they take out all the stress out of meal planning and going to the grocery store and you just have everything right there and one of the things i love as a single person i don't wind up with all of these bottles of sauces that i need for only one recipe i have just enough for that one recipe and it gets you kind of out of your rut gets you trying new things it really just helps with your lifestyle it's also a an environmental sustainable choice because uh they have a carbon footprint 25 percent lower than store-bought grocery made meals uh and so they really try to keep uh those things down and so it's, it's a really great product and the recipes are just yummy they're very good and uh 
is that something that would do you think help in your life dory oh my gosh absolutely like as a fellow uh single lady i can really relate to having all of these bottles of sauces and condiments in my fridge that I can never as one person get through. So yeah, yeah having all of that pre-portioned already for you is the dream. Yeah, yeah, definitely. So check out uh, hellofresh.com slash Hallmarkies10. You can get uh, you can get 10 free meals, including free shipping. You enter code Hallmarkies10. So definitely check that out. I think you'll really love it. Right. So then we had riddled with the seed on Martha's Vineyard mystery. So we haven't been that long since we had the first one. What did you think of that in the introductory to the series? I really liked the first one and I could have sworn that when they first aired the first one, this second one was supposed to air in January as well. Uh -huh. Like I'm pretty sure there were previews for it saying it was like coming up in a couple weeks. So I was mad when they didn't air it right yeah. after. Yeah. You know how Hallmark likes to trick us with the schedule. Nothing right. is ever as they say it's going to be. Yeah. Um, but I enjoyed the first one. I really like Jesse Metcalf. I think that with these mysteries, typically, I do prefer the female protagonist. Mm -hmm. um, but I still like him in this role. And I... I thought the setting was beautiful, the mystery. It's kind of like a darker series, which I don't mind. Um, <laughs> but my only complaint about the first one was Z going from crime scene to crime scene and from the morgue to the exam room in heels to the beach in heels, and I couldn't handle it. I was like... <laughs> This is so impractical. She is standing over a dead body in her cute heels and dress. We must fix this. And I'm glad that in this second one, she had more sensible shoes. She was still in heels, but at least it was a covered toe most of the time. So I was okay. <laughs> yeah, no, it's true. I, <laughs> yeah, it's kind of like Jurassic World all over again. <laughs> Already the T-Rex in heels. It's a little... Yes, she would be running, like, running down the beach in heels. No, that's not happening. And who is in heels in the morgue? Oh, no. Yeah. <laughs> well, so my feelings about Jesse Metcalf is I am not a fan of Trace in Jesse Shores. And Trabby makes me into an insane person. I just I hate that <laughs> arc so much. And, uh, and so, but I don't necessarily think it's his fault. I just... I don't think that I don't think that Robert Downey Jr. or uh, I don't know whoever else is a great Joaquin Phoenix. They couldn't sell those lines. They couldn't sell that part. No great. I mean, it is just terribly written, terribly done, incredibly frustrating, in my humble opinion. Um, and so, um, and so. A lot of people are really down on Jesse Metcalf, at least on our podcast. <laughs> They're not that big of fans. But I'm telling you, it's because of Trace and it's soured the water because he's fine in this. Yep. He's perfectly serviceable as a leading yep. man in this kind of thing, in my opinion. And I do think it's a little bit weird having a male lead, but I kind of got over that pretty quickly, to be honest. Yeah. And, uh, and I like this one is one of the ones that's less of a stretch for... Uh, for her involvement because she has worked at the morgue she's a doctor like the and his involvement because he is a past detective so like right. it's way less of a stretch than I'm a morning show chef right <laughs> so I mean it's it's fine and and so this one also had a, a jewel heist kind of element to it which I really enjoyed again and uh, this time it's a brooch and I hated that brooch it was I mean it looked very valuable but it was also to me hideous I hated it it was so big <laughs> I hated it too and when the girl was like I'm gonna be wearing this brooch tomorrow like for people to look at me in this brooch I was like no I can't yeah. I would never go look at someone in a brooch like no thank you yeah, I'm good looks it looked terrible and so but this 
Uh, this was, uh, did you know that the, um, the reporter that's on this series, uh, named, played by Chelsea Hobbs, called Jackie Shaw? Jackie Shaw, yep. Did you know yep. that that's off of our friends over at the Bubbly Sesh? Aimed <laughs> honor of the Bubbly Sesh girls. I, it, you know, it just, it gives me, it gives me a little chuckle every time I hear it. Me you too. know, it just makes me so happy. A nice little shout out to them. Yeah, I think so. So if anybody wants to write a, a character in a series based on, based on us, <laughs> you have a, you have, <laughs> we'll take it. Yeah. <laughs> Rachel, Dory, Rachel, Dory, Rachel. Like that. Be great. Right. It'd be the best. <laughs> Uh, so it starts out though, it's not even our main heist. There's actually another heist that the movie starts out with that's in like the yep. city and it looks kind of like a, a bank heist of some kind. Then we find out that, so Jeff is going to get hired to do security at this security. brooch party, Brit's brooch party. <laughs> and <laughs> we find out that this brooch as ugly as it is, is worth $5 million, which probably I mean, it's pretty big. <laughs> yeah, those jewels are pretty large. I, I see five million. Yep. <laughs> uh, and I was so proud of Jesse Metcalf because in the scene, because it's so weird in the series because they have that guy who's there literally just to pour him coffee. Like, yeah, <laughs> like what is going on with that guy? Um, but I was so proud of him because he actually had coffee in that cup. I could see it. There was brown I liquid. I could see it. Yep, I could see it sloshing around, and it. You know what? I clocked that as well, and I put it in my notes. And I'm glad you caught it too. Yeah, I was take like, note, Hallmark. Take note, Hallmark. You need to do that more. Yeah, we notice. And I was like, who says he's not dedicated to performing? He actually had real coffee. That never That's happens. Right. In fact, this is the second time he's had noticeable liquid in a Hallmark movie because. I one of the things I was so impressed with in uh the Christmas next door is that they have that whole scene the caroling scene where they have hot cider in glass cups and oh that's right you can see, you can see the steam coming off of it I was like this is dedication this it's is the real deal yeah yep. I was like they're actually drinking apple cider this has never happened in the history of Hallmark so I was uh, so he it's really good and that's so funny. I'm so proud of you that you noticed it too. Oh my gosh, totally. When he, when I saw he poured it for him and I was like, he, did he really just pour liquid? Is that really happening? And then we saw it in the cup. Oh, thumbs up. Yeah, yeah. So then, so some of our red herrings, we have Willard Gifford starts out being kind of a red herring. Uh, he's the uncle, I think, of Brit. Uh, or like sort of Godfather sort of, or something, yeah, something like that. And I thought, for, I thought at first that maybe he uh, was a villain because he is a villain a lot. That actor, he is always a villain. <laughs> I thought the same thing. I was like, he just looks sinister, and yeah. I'm not feeling this, but oops. <laughs> <laughs> Especially when he when they get the flowers, I was kind of like, hmm, this seems. This is something, is this something shady? Just because I still wasn't right. trusting him. But it was actually just a sweet little bit gesture and it like clues. I know. Um, but I, I was, I was sort of uh, suspicious of him. And, and then uh, you find out that this is a, a family heirloom. And there's a woman named Rebecca Lane, who is Britt's cousin. Uh, or I think, yeah. And then you have, actually you have Britt's cousin. There's a woman named Rebecca Lane. And then you have Brett's cousin, Lloyd, Lloyd Prajna, I think it's, and he's really upset that uh, he didn't get any of the, any of the inheritance with the, with the brooch. And, he had me on edge this entire yeah. movie. Every scene he was in, he was intense. That actor was bringing the intensity. I will give him that. He was stressing me out. I was like, oh, you are troubled. Yeah. And, uh, and then Jackie Shaw, she gets the scoop on the stolen brooch. Cause they put the brooch in like double layered security vaults. And it turns out that, that it ends up, uh, they end up finding a way to get in and steal the brooch and she's on it right away. And, and so, uh, and there's also a scene where, 
uh, Britt gets attacked. This is before they find out the Brit brooch is stolen, actually. So Britt gets yep. attacked in her house, uh, knocks her on the glass table, and she ends up in the in the hospital. So there's a lot going on at the beginning of this film. Mm-hmm. And, <laughs> and yeah, and then so Jackie Shaw gets gets the the leaks and the news about the uh, about the brooch pretty quickly, and then you have Johanna Newmarch and Matthew James Dowden playing a couple called the fields and <laughs> so they're like art buyers i guess art buyers mm-hmm. and i loved they were great they did a good job with what they <laughs> what they had to do i thought of playing these like deliciously less sort of snobby evil uh kind of bad i don't know they were just fun they did a good job i thought yeah I agree. I I enjoyed their performance too. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And we interviewed Matthew James Dowden uh, this last fall and he was the best. So funny. And uh, he, he's had a really interesting life. So you should check out that interview if you haven't. He was, he was great. And then I, you have, I, that, uh, so then we we're not hearing anything from uh from uh will willard he's not returning calls so people think oh is he involved somehow what's going on and uh the the only real family fun in this one was aside from the backstory which wasn't fun but it was more information about our characters but uh it was the fried clams and tartar sauce <laughs> That's right. We had a tartar sauce, tartar sauce uh, contest. We had Jesse Metcalf frying clams at what I presume was 7 a.m. Uh, <laughs> initially. Then he brought them to the coffee shop owner. Yeah. Uh, so that was a fun little, um, you know, a fun little moment. But I was, it did make me hungry for some fried clams. I'll I tell you that much. Me too. Was, they look all, good. All part of a balanced breakfast. I mean, come on. <laughs> it's Martha's Vineyard. <laughs> yep. Coffee and fried clams. Sounds about right. I, I did love, there was one line where it was something like, uh, how the other half lives. Uh, you know, <laughs> the other half lives. And I'm thinking, y'all live in Martha's Vineyard. Just stop. Like what? Exactly. <laughs> I don't think uh, anybody. I mean, I'm sure there are poor people in Martha's Vineyard, and I apologize, but it seems like a, they all are living pretty fine. Yeah, they all they all seem pretty good to me, at least yeah. in this movie. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Uh, so that made me laugh. And <laughs> uh, so, also the other thing about the fields is they thought they had the brooch at one point, but it turned out it was a fake. So yeah, uh, they kind of bitter about that as well, which was sort of a fun dynamic, I thought. You also meet yeah. a guy named Victor Gaines and Rebecca, who was played by well, that's Rebecca Rebecca Lane, and she, she was played by Gabrielle Miller, who I love, uh, who I wish we saw more of in Hallmark. Uh, she was on Trading Christmas, my favorite. Um, yes, of course, I love her. Yeah. And so she's, they're like snobby art dealers and especially Victor Gaines. Uh, he, and he has sold, he has sold jewelry on the black market before he's been, uh, he's been tried for that before. So mm-hmm. yeah, so all kinds of suspicion. And, uh, and then at one point they, uh, they also have this whole thing through the movie about the is the emerald cursed, the curse of the of the giant ugly roach. <laughs> <laughs> I was about to say the only curse is that it's so ugly. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, and so then there is uh, there's a letter with some flowers from Willard. And it tells her that Clifford Moncrief, Moncrief uh, is that you have to return to the works of Clifford Moncrief. And uh, so we also get a, uh, we have Jeff has a nightmare about his past shooting. And, uh, and Z tells him that uh, it was not a 38. 
in his back. Um, yes. So they now think that there was actually two people uh, involved in the shooting, uh, two guns, uh, not just the one that killed his partner. So the, the, so that was a nice little like tantalizing kind of thing for where well, I'm sure we're going to play out as the course of the season. Right. And that they think the second shooter might still be out there somewhere. Yeah. So dun, dun, dun. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And so then there's this guy, Rodney Emerson, who's just kind of a, I think kind of a go between. He's just, he, yeah. And he ends up <laughs> knocking Jeff out with a two by four. Poor guy. <laughs> As you do. Yeah. Why did, why did he get involved in all this? Who knows? Um, and so Lloyd, he says, oh, I don't know anything. Uh, it's, I'm not involved, but he doesn't want to, uh, doesn't want to uh, come and he's a little bit shady and, and not wanting to tell his whole side of the story. Um, and we find out that there was a second code used for the safes it wasn't the uh the code that brit had that they were able to to do and um and uh so willard gifford he steals the brooch they find out but where is it and so kind of it was pretty it was actually a little confusing to me about what's going on with the brooch but nevertheless um uh, they see Lloyd. He's leaving town. There's a pretty, pretty long running scene with Jesse uh, running yep. after Lloyd. And you got to be impressed. I mean, how can people say he's not dedicated to his art? He ran all the scenes. I mean, come on. He sure did. Yes, he sure did. He looked great while doing it. Yes. So, <laughs> and so Willard basically like planned everything to protect Britt. Uh, but the problem was that Lloyd became involved and it just messed everything up. So the fields are about to leave and that's when they notice that there are burn marks on Emerson who uh, he ends up getting um, he ends up getting murdered. This guy Rodney Emerson. And But they notice these burn marks and they're like that's the same burn marks on the the people from the early part of the movie and and so it turns out that they're using the stun gun uh to as part of their thing that uh to as part of their plan and so then uh we they think that the brooch is buried in a boat based on the clues uh for the um in the flowers and so they go out there and Britt is sent to this lighthouse and uh, they're, the fields are there and they were just so fun. They were so they dripping were so with like fun. evilness. I loved it. It was so good. Like <laughs> it was just like Z when she comes for Z and Z is like screaming and yeah. she ties her up like it's just so when she tied up um with our friend with the brooch yeah and and i was when, kind of taken aback when jeff just throws the brooch in the water i was like oh wow <laughs> and of course well, yeah that part i was not okay because it didn't really hit me that that was probably a fake and i was like did he just throw five million dollars in the water like i know <laughs> that lives are at stake right now and i get it yeah but could there have been another way to go about this like he's very smart he is a former detective like he just threw five million dollars in the water and the best part was he goes um someone says what did you just do and the girl who owns the brooch was like yeah what did you just do <laughs> I was like, the perfect appropriate reaction like yeah. did you just throw my family's like much loved formerly lost five million dollar brooch in the water like mm -hmm. there had to be a better way <laughs> yeah that's what uh, i i i was 
I, I was very surprised. So I agree. And so it turns out, I guess there's a part in the letter on the flowers that talks about tran uh, transients, uh, that go after a transient uh, thing. And, and I guess that was code for fake. So the whole clue to, I mean, this is very well thought out. All of this, like, that's the yeah. thing. If you overthink this, it's, it doesn't work because he would have had to have thought of all of these you know, steps and hiding the fake brooch and, and uh, there's a lot there to put together, but whatever, if you're just enjoying it on the moment, I think it, it's fun. I mean, I can say the yeah. same thing, honestly, about Knives Out. Like if, if you For are sure. thinking that, like there's, it's so convoluted and the plot is so ridiculous, yeah. but if you just go and have fun with it, it's fun. Right. Like in Knives Out, you need that final moment of like walking you through everything yeah. that happened. Like you need to be handheld a little bit. Yeah. And I never mind that because no. the ride okay. is so fun and it's right. similar with this one. Yeah, exactly. They're not trying to change your lives in these movies. They're just trying to make you laugh and have a good exactly. time. Exactly. So anyway, they find out the brooch is hidden in the lighthouse statue and, uh, and so all's well. And uh, the uh, they you know they got all the the people they got the the fields <laughs> in uh, in custody and Victor Gaines he's a bad guy bad dude uh, so yeah and uh, we also find out that the reason that Z left New York uh, was because uh, she came back to the island for her fiance and that her mm. cheated on her so yes. that's uh, that's pretty uh interesting and i thought that they had better chemistry in this than the first one uh that it was a little stiff for me that first one between the two of them but i think this was better and i like that they have kind of a jokey banter going on yeah. like it's a very fun relationship there isn't too much tension yet like romantic tension, like they just genuinely like and enjoy each other and are a little flirty, but not, it's, you know, it hasn't boiled over yet. And it's really cute. Like their yeah. relationship is just really cute. I agree. I, I definitely agree. So I'd get this one. I think it's a little lower than Picture Perfect Mysteries, but I would give it 3.75. I would give it 3.5. Same thing. It's a little lower than uh, Picture Perfect for me, but I still enjoyed it. And I also wonder how I would have felt if the movies weren't so similar. And especially because I watched them back to back, like it was an yeah. easier comparison because right down to like the main object of the mystery, which was a piece of jewelry. Right. Um, so I enjoyed it, but I thought that the execution was a little more fun and mm -hmm. interesting and picture perfect. Yeah. And a little bit better, a little bit better chemistry too. Uh, yeah. And, yeah. And so I, 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 I liked it, I think also better than the first one. So oh, wait, I did too. <laughs> um, I know I did too. And it's very like, um, so I, if you think about the first two movies of both of these series, they're basically pilots yeah. for what will eventually be a series. And it makes sense, right? Because I never really fully enjoy pilots because there's just too much to accomplish. You're, yeah. you got to figure out every character, their name, their basic backstory, kind of what they do, where they fit into everything. So in the second movies, they're able to kind of build out and give more dimension to everybody and everything. And I think both of these movies were very successful in doing that. Yeah. Well, and I would encourage Hallmark to continue to do have more layers, not have it just be about a murder, have it be about, you know, have a heist element or uh maybe a kidnap kidnapping some other kind of thing that they're looking into uh as opposed to just the here's a person they're done for you know kind of thing uh i like it it just makes them more fun it makes it more interesting to me i and totally agree so our twitter followers i put up which did you which february mystery do you prefer and why and we have 63 percent prefer riddled with deceit so 
the Jesse Madcap fans, yeah, came out uh, to support. Uh, but <laughs> we had a few, just a couple comments. Just uh, Caroline, she says, uh, Picture Perfect Mysteries. I love the mystery and honestly didn't guess who did it right away. And uh, And then we have for Riddled with Deceit, just Arlene Gilchrist. She says, a lot of twists and turns and great acting. And uh, Michelle Benson, she says, not up to date with these two yet, but so looking forward to catching up. The mysteries have been good this year. Thank goodness, because I've not loved the Valentine's movies. <laughs> oh, welcome to our club. Yes. Welcome to our club. We feel you. Yes. yes. Uh, Michelle is in Scotland. So she gets things a little later sometimes than the rest of us. Uh, but she's awesome. And yes, join our therapy group because we're all, we're there. We're all needed. We are all struggling. This is truly like Twitter is group therapy right now, you know, like, yeah. and we all need each other to get through these dark few months, few first months of the year. Yeah. Spring we fever, do. save us. Yes. <laughs> so there we go. <laughs> Little peek into uh, our love after, after recap, when I, whenever we finish it, but it's been a little bit of a weird time, but, uh, but yeah, these were both pretty good. So let us know what you thought of these two mysteries do you kind of like what homework's doing there we've got a uh we, we don't have another one uh, for a little while uh and, yeah, march, I think. yeah the end yep. of march uh then yep. we're gonna get a new mystery 101 so that will be <gasps> fun yeah, yeah. so <laughs> uh, but yeah march is like this barren wasteland of hallmark so it's it, I know. I'm really disappointed. I mean, this is a whole other podcast. Like, <laughs> Rachel knows my thoughts, but. <laughs> yeah. I'm like, when calls the heart is not enough. No. <laughs> uh, so, anyway, uh, let us know what you thought of these two mysteries. It would be really fun. And uh, thank you so much, Dory, for coming on. And this was always a delight and so much fun. And uh, so where can people find you and your podcast? Um, well, thank you for having me, first and foremost. Um, I always love chatting with you about all of the um, ups and downs of the Hallmark Cinematic Universe. <laughs> um, I, You can find me at All the Seals. That is our podcast. Um, we... Um, had a a very late winter fest recap that went up about a week and a half ago, but we'll also be doing a recap of love ever after as well this month. And um, you can find us at all the fields podcast or at all the fields pod on Twitter and all the fields pod on Facebook and um, wherever you download podcasts. Great. And you can find me at Rachel's Reviews, all of our social media, iTunes, YouTube, and on Rotten Tomatoes. So check that out. I do a weekly family movie night review. So I would love for you to take a look at that. And then if you're following the podcast on social media, we sure appreciate all of that. And if you're listening on okay. iTunes, please leave us your ratings and reviews. And if you're listening on YouTube, please give us a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel. That helps us out a lot. We also have our our patron group which it means so much to us and we really really appreciate it and then we have our merch store which has tons of hardies and uh postables and other fun inspired uh merch so check that out as well and uh, so thanks again and we'll talk to you all later let us know what you thought <laughs> bye, bye.